Yes, so this is an interesting one, right? So this is a story that's been rumbling in the techno scene and electronic music scene for a while. It seems like ever since, you know, the social media reparations have taken place, it seems like the electronic music space is always, but as well has kind of been like, hey, we need to readdress some things that are happening in the scene. Now, I'm a bit conflicted by this whole thing, right? Because I'm not too, I'm not a fan of, uh 50 50 gender splits on lineups i don't think that's the best way to approach those kind of things um i think people should be on the lineup through merit and through skill not through you know what you gender you happen to be born into born with that's just ridiculous and i'm also not a fan of you know affirmative action in lineups where you're like oh we need to have two black people two asians two whites just sounds like a nonsense right you should effectively be trying to program a festival or club night around the stuff that you like and then you try and find an artist that would be the best to showcase that stuff and maybe be able to bring a crowd or whatever it may be right have a good dynamic between each other that's what you should be doing you shouldn't be using if if ever there's a place that doesn't need to be politicized it's nightclubs and the sort of like you know festival scene and whatever maybe right you don't need to politicize that we have enough of that in our everyday life not everything has to be politics but on the same token i'm also aware that it does feel as if like the electronic music space especially techno disco house has been whitewashed right considering the roots it has in black culture right considering this origins right considering the fact that techno was effectively invented in detroit by a group of black djs and artists that for somehow for it to go from there for it to be a completely whitewashed lineup at Berghain, Awakenings, uh, Decamantle, just doesn't make sense. It doesn't marry well, especially when you look at the fact that there's so many, there's an abundance of artists, whether they're male or female, um, happens to be black, you know, maybe from a Latino country or I don't know, South American, Central American, whatever it may be, um, some African DJs, there's loads of people out there who can fill that void. But it seems like there's a reluctance in an industry to try anything outside of the norm, which then leads to this circle, this kind of circular issue where some people complain they're not getting involved. The people that are involved complain that there's no there's no issue because they see other people that look like the people that are complaining, even though it's not really reflective of what's going on in the scene and there's no real solutions. And one thing that kind of brought this to light was this tweet that came, went around in the scene by this guy called Ryan Clover regarding the Awakenings live stream that I guess they're having. And I got it up on your screen, but basically he says, it's a shame to see Awakenings host a weekend digital festival that includes zero black artists. Especially disappointing knowing that they took part in a blackout Tuesday and still don't think to promote POC artists who literally founded the generation the genre sorry that they're operating. And if you look at the actual lineup, it's the typical lineup that you, you know, you know and love from an Awakenings Festival. Loco Dias Close, Joseph Crapperati, Adam Bear, Anna, Yoris Vaughan, Mesher Plex, uh, Nina Kravitz, Amelie Lenz, Bart Skills, Rebecca Speedy, Jay and Panport, right? It's essentially the whitest lineup you could ever get, <laughs> really, if you think about what's going on now in awakenings defense they could be like hey we just book our friends right we're like a festival that we do in is it in amsterdam not too sure but definitely definitely it's in holland we're a festival but that you know we've got our roots steeped in the dance music industry the people that worked in this lion festival worked in all these big clubs blah 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 we just book our friends and it's not our fault our friends happen to be Bart skills rebecca speedy j pampo amelia lenzi the crab yes adam bear blah, 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 right it's not their fault but there needs to be a bit more responsibility in the fact that you want your nights your festivals to reflect the people that attend it right that's something that i've always been consciously annoyed by sometimes with fashion brands right especially vetema in the early period or you know they've changed their, their casting a, um, a lot recently but in the early period when you know maybe the first four scenes of vetema it was very evident the people who were buying it right mostly black mostly asian if you go to any metropolitan city where you have you know luxury fashion stores or you know um, multi-brand stores the people buying vetima were black and asian but then for the most part the entire lineup was just you know them kind of showcasing his central and eastern european friends it didn't make much sense really because those guys aren't wearing the stuff that he makes right they're buying their stuff from flea markets and he's basically interpreting it into vetima so it doesn't you know it kind of doing viable but they address that cool no problem just reflect the people that wear your clothes that's all you want to see in the runway right you don't want to see someone you know tokenizing a, uh, a race of people but just reflect the people that wear it so that when they see themselves in the runway even if it's uh um an idealized 
version of themselves right if they're slim or tall or whatever it may be at least they see somebody that looks like them on the runway that's really important and it's also important in dance music it's important to see like it's important to see somebody that looks like you've reflected in the music that you're enjoying just so you feel a bit more accepted and it? it's just a nice feeling no one likes to go somewhere where you're the odd one out in a group it's just as weird and it's even more so in a electronic music space especially techno and hip house because there's no night you could go to maybe maybe some with some exceptions but it's very rare you're going to walk in and you're going to be the only black dude there's definitely one or two people that are non-white in the arena or in the space right who, who are maybe associated with a label or you know our friends with so-and-so artists so just have that reflect on a lineup and i don't really see why it's so difficult to do so but also understand on the side of awakenings you don't want to be put in a position where you're essentially um, being forced to book people who you don't necessarily think are that good or going to sell any tickets because that's the other side of, of the electronic music space that's really hard to figure out is is all this complaining online about lineups um, helpful? Is it going to really change anything? Because maybe some of these nights, some of these festivals are just a money-making operation. They're not essentially there to save our scene or to contribute to the culture, right? Or to give back. They're not there for that. They're there essentially as a play thing for somebody that has a lot of disposable income who happens to like music as well and has connections they just put on a basic it's sort of like their version of putting on a house party they throw this massive festival they split the costings with some of their other affluent friends if they get a profit amazing but you know they want to go down in history as somebody that put together this really wide range of festival so if that's the case why not just um, remove yourself from that conversation and put on your own thing right i think of that queer festival called hole that they have in germany right a good example um i remember when they were trying to do some um fundraising to make sure that they are around still for next year because obviously this year's festival got cancelled due to the covid and i remember them read this reading in the, in the whole um in the statement they put out press release that they're saying oh we don't ever make any money they just always break even and they only put it on because they essentially went to provide a safe space for people within the queer community right queer lgbtq plus which is amazing it's great but i think that's a better use of their time than trying to force i don't know a uh, primavera to acknowledge the artists that they want to kind of prop up or to provide a space for them that they feel safe in it probably makes more sense for them to kind of pull their resource step away pull their resources and put on their own festival or night that is going to better address or better showcase the scene of the music that they are kind of a part of that makes more sense isn't it but also understand the other side of it where it's like why should you always have to make your own thing if you just want to get involved in music that everyone else is enjoying it's really difficult man. i'm not too sure what the right solution of it is but the, the kind of the work twitter techno crew are just not happy and i definitely sympathize with it but i also understand that if you're the awakenings crew you just might think hey we just put people purely based on the number of tickets that they can sell if they happen to be our friends even better but you can't deny that everyone on that list is going to sell ticket right they're going to sell at least i don't know let's say 50 tickets each person can definitely sell and then awakenings have to make up the rest through marketing and all that sort of stuff it, it's it's it probably makes more sense again they're probably having to shell out a lot more in fees because i'm sure these people don't pay for they don't play for a hundred dollars an hour so that's a something they're going to have to kind of you know work out but I don't know what the right answer is really in that regard that's my thing i'm not a fan of 50 50 gender splits and i'm not a fan of affirmative action when it comes to lineups but there definitely has to be some sort of solution out there to better reflect the dance floors that's really it really isn't it you go to panorama bar you know on any given weekend and sometimes the lineups are like you know what i mean there's not much variety in terms of the kind of people that are playing behind the decks and you look at the people that you're dancing among you're like <sighs> there's a bit of a disconnect there but again maybe that's not the place maybe we have to treat these festivals and these big clubs as the major leagues and um, if you want to come up and be like you know if you know if you want to have a chance to have music that you like or the scene that you like reflected maybe you go to like a something a little bit more i don't know grassroots maybe that's a thing i don't know um but also understand the fact that you know why shouldn't why shouldn't somebody why shouldn't a counterpart why, why shouldn't somebody that looks like why shouldn't somebody have the same status as Anna but doesn't isn't white? Why shouldn't they get the same opportunities? And I really don't know what the answer is in that regard. Maybe it's a question for the promoters and the event bookers because they're the ones that really hold a lot of the power because they basically have relationships with the agents and all that stuff and they book the same people. So maybe it's, it's a 
it's a push to kind of get those people to be more inclusive take more risks in the lineup i'm not really sure but it's a very very messy topic to get involved in because there's so much intricacies that go on there people don't really want to admit but i thought that was interesting to touch upon